Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Shan from Home with Shan over on Instagram and this is weird. I'm sitting in front of the camera again and I haven't sat in front of the camera in what, three or four weeks now because if you don't know, um, which I'm sure you do because you just clicked on this video, uh, I've just had a baby and it's been um, stressful but amazing because not only have we just had a baby but we've also moved house. You can probably see this is a different background to normal, this is a different house. We've relocated um, and we've done it all with a three week old baby so it's been yeah chaotic but actually like a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, I've been so lucky because I've had my partner, my mum, my dad, everyone's been helping out so anyway I'm ready now. Today is the first day that Ash is back at work so I thought I would use this time to film this video which is my birth story so yeah, grab a cup of tea if you're pregnant or you just like hearing birth stories or whatever and you want to hear hopefully what you'll find a positive story. I definitely found it positive um, even when going through it. It was three and a bit weeks ago now and it's still very fresh in my mind. So I'll talk you through everything um, and what my experience was. Obviously everyone's experience is different. I just had what I consider a really, really lucky and positive experience um, and especially because it was an induction I know a lot of people worry about inductions I certainly did um, so yeah grab a cup of tea I've got mine um, and let's have a little chat about my birth story baby George is asleep in his little maxi cozy next to me crib we don't actually have it like folded down next to the bed we just have it sort of there as a little sort of Moses basket type thing um, but he absolutely loves it. He sleeps really, really well in it. And this is his nap time, so hopefully he stays asleep long enough for me to film this video. Um, but yeah, so basically, if I talk a little bit about um, the induction process, but also how it came about, how my induction came about. Okay, so I actually wrote some notes on my phone um, just to remind myself, refresh my memory about the timings and things like that. So if you saw my, not last video, but the video before that, it was explaining that I was going in for an induction. And just to rewind a little bit on that, so basically I had to go for a growth scan on Monday the 7th of September at about 9.30 in the morning um, because my bump, or baby George, was um, measuring in under the 10th centile. And if you're below the 10th centile, and if you don't know what that means, it basically means that 10% of babies are smaller than yours but 90% of babies are bigger so if it's just below the 10th centile then they think you might have to have some monitoring afterwards if the baby's really small um, so basically yeah I went to for a growth scan and they said yeah you are measuring a little bit small so I'll send you to the bigger hospital because I was at a smaller a smaller like um, maternity centre type thing before for the scan then I had to be sent to the larger hospital in the area and just go for monitoring and they kind of basically said that I had not a lot of amniotic fluid around the bump um, and they were worried that my placenta wasn't working as well and he wasn't getting all the stuff that he needed from the placenta um, and because I was full term they were going to suggest induction um, and there was absolutely no risk to baby for doing an induction but there was a slight risk to baby if we didn't do the induction so of course as soon as I heard that there was a slight risk I suggest the induction I was quite against well not against I was quite um, reluctant to ever say yes to an induction but as soon as you hear that there's a, even a tiny possible risk for your baby you, you automatically say yes you can't not really um, so yeah so I said yes to the induction what happened next so um, after I'd been monitored and stuff the midwife at that hospital examined me and told me that I was actually already one centimeter dilated which is insane so um, she offered me a, a stretch and sweep which I took so she gave me a stretch and sweep I didn't find it um, uncomfortable at all, um, maybe it's because I was already a centimetre dilated, I don't know, um, but yeah, it was it was not uncomfortable particularly. I know a lot of people say that they find it really, really uncomfortable, but I didn't find it bad at all. Um, I was hoping that that would get things going sort of naturally over the next day, but they'd booked me in for the induction at 2 o'clock the following day, so Tuesday the 8th of September, um, and basically I went home. Um, well, actually, annoyingly, I went home, 
um, told Ash about everything and we were like, right, okay, let's start prepping, let's sterilise some bottles, let's get the crib up, let's do all of the bits and bobs that you've got to do. Um, and then the hospital rang me and I'm like, oh, um, I see you're booked in for an induction tomorrow, you need to get a COVID test. I was like, I was literally just there and it's not... So yeah, that was slightly annoying because the hospital is not close to where I lived, but whatever, I had to go back get the COVID test, which by the way, was horrible. Like, I actually, thinking back, I genuinely think that, that having the COVID test was worse than, like, most of my labour. Obviously not, like, all of it, but yeah, it was just horrible. Like, if you haven't had one, they basically put, like, the swab at the back of your throat, but, like, really deep, and then they put it, like, right up your nose, both nostrils, and it's so deep. It's I swear it like touches your brain, it's disgusting. Um, and I asked them, I was like crying and I asked them to stop and they still wouldn't stop, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> After I did that, I went back home and just went over my hospital bag and all that kind of stuff one last time. Um, and then basically at about five o'clock that evening before the day of the induction, I had like a nice warm bath. I had like some essential oils go in. It was really relaxing, but none of it obviously like induced labor. I had like loads of tea, like um, the raspberry leaf tea. We actually had a curry that night. I think I had a lamb madras. So it wasn't like a really, really spicy curry, but it was still quite spicy um, to try and induce labor. Obviously it didn't work. Um, to be honest, I never really believed that it would work anyway, but you kind of just have to try, don't you? Went for a long walk, all those kind of things that are supposed to like get labour going kind of didn't work, so whatever, that was fine. Between like eight and nine, I had, did have a few like little tightenings and things like that, but it was nothing too serious. I was just bouncing on my birthing ball and it kind of was fine, it wasn't like too uncomfortable, so I just went to bed. Um, but yeah, it definitely wasn't like labour at all. Um, and then the following morning, I woke up at 8.30 and actually had um, my mucus plug like go. And trust me, when that goes, you know, because gross. Um, and then basically that morning, I actually popped up to Next to grab some more baby grows because I was like, all of his baby grows are massive. Not massive, but they weren't gonna be really small. And because I was told that I had a really small baby, I went out and got some like tiny baby and some newborn baby baby grows. And I'm really, really glad I did because he fit into them perfectly. Um, and he wouldn't fit into the ones that I originally had, so I definitely did that. Basically then, we went to the hospital at two o'clock. We were like, right, okay, this is my hospital appointment, going in, had everything. Me and Ash both went in. He was allowed in the entire time for the induction, as long as it was between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. until I was in active labor. So Ash and I both went to hospital at two o'clock, um, waited for the COVID test result to be to come back because that still hadn't come back from the day before. Then basically um, there was something wrong with their machine. It took ages for them to like put, hook me up and monitor me and stuff. So we were just waiting there until like five o'clock to be monitored. Um, nothing really happened. Me and Ash were just chilling. We sat there, we had a bit of food. Um, I went out for a walk. Yeah, nothing really happened until five o'clock. And then at five o'clock they put the Prostine gel up to yeah, induce me essentially. So that's the version I had. I know you can have like the pessary and like a few other versions, but I had the gel um, and that was fine. Um, I actually started contracting quite soon after that, but again, they weren't that painful. Um, it was very manageable. I could still talk through them. We were listening to a podcast. Um, we were listening to the uh, My Dad Wrote a Porno podcast, actually. It's so funny if you haven't listened to that. It's so good. Um, but yeah, I was basically being monitored whilst I was having those contractions, um, listening to the podcast on the ball, on the birthing ball. I was totally fine, like ca sort of carrying on through that. And that was until about 8.30, then Ash had to leave, like I said, because it was 8.30 p.m. Um, and that's the time, like visiting hours end at that time, and I still wasn't in active labor. I was about two centimeters dilated at this point. I was having like r regular contractions sort of every five minutes, um, rather than the irregular ones that I was having before. It was like every five minutes I was having a contraction really, but they weren't super, super painful. They were okay. At half past 10, I had my bloody show. So that's like the mucus plug, but a bloody version essentially. And that was gross, even gross. So when I went to the toilet, I obviously saw it. Um, and then at 11 o'clock, I was put on the monitor to see if I was ready to basically have my waters broken because I was pretty much having like the regular contractions. It was just to get things going properly. So they broke my waters at about quarter to 12. So quarter to midnight, they broke my waters. They examined me. Waters broke, um, and then literally immediately my contractions turned from like manageable every five minutes to like really harsh, severe contractions. And oh my god, like 
they were bad, like so bad. And then I was just like, this is what actual labour is like. This is, I cannot do this for, like I was expecting it to be like hours and hours and hours. And that's when I called Ash, I told him to come. He was there in like 20 minutes, but I'd already been transferred to the labour ward by then. So at midnight, I'd been taken to labour ward. This is Wednesday the 9th of September. I was taken to the labour ward. I was having really, really harsh contractions. I was in a lot of pain. Ash turned up like 20 minutes um, after I called him and it was like, it was really bad. I was being sick, um, and I think that's probably why they were, they were reluctant to give me pain relief, or I don't know, um, they were just, they just weren't giving me anything. So I didn't have any gas in there, I didn't have anything, and I was being really sick, um, and it was horrible, it was absolutely vile, uh, and that's when I had, I was just like, give me an epidural, I can't do this, especially because I was told that I was two centimetres dilated, and that was at one o'clock, I was told that I was two centimetres dilated, but then I was examined at, I was at, uh, well, sorry, I was really sick at half past one, and then I was examined at 1.50, about 1.50, and they, they then told me that I was, um, six centimetres, so I was like, okay, well I don't need an epidural then, because if I'm six centimetres, just give me some bloody gas and air, give me something, like if I'm sick, I'm sick, I'd, I'd rather be sick and not be in this much pain, like it, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad, so as soon as I got the, um, as soon as I got the gas and air, I was fine, like I was, okay, I wasn't fine, I was still in labour, I was in established labour from 1.52 apparently, um, so 1.52 in the morning, and then I was ten centimetres dilated at like 2.30. I don't know how that happened, but from 1.52 to from 1.52 to 2.30, I'd gone like four centimeters. So I'd gone from six centimeters to 10 centimeters and I was just ready to push. From that moment though, I think I moved rooms. I don't know why, so I was in the bed and I was all hooked up and I had the gas and air. And then there were two midwives and Ash like wheeling me through the um, corridor. I'm not even sure why we had to go to a different room, but because I was just out of it, obviously, um, concentrating on other things. Um, but they were wheeling me through this like other room and it was just all very complicated. I don't know what was going on. But we got to the other room um, and I was already, like even when we were traveling from that room to the other room, I was like, my body was trying to push. Um, and I didn't even know what that was. So it was, it's such a weird sensation. Like your body just like tenses up and like, yeah, it's just horrible. Like, cause you don't know what it is. And I didn't know that was what that was, if that makes any sense. I should have known, but and I didn't say anything to anyone. And then when the mid when we got to the other room, the midwife was like, are you ready to push? I was like, oh, is that what that is? <laughs> so yeah, it was a bit weird, but I mean, you just don't know, do you? Like you don't know until you're physically doing it. Obviously if I did that again, I would know now what that feeling is. But anyway, um, so yeah, we're in the other room at 2.30, 10 centimeters. Um, ready to push, 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 pushing. He was here by 2.48, so 18 minutes from being 10 centimetres dilated to him being born. Like, it was insane. So quick. It, I can't believe how quick everything happened, and I'm so lucky that my entire labour generally, like, from midnight, from when I started getting, like, harsh contractions, to 2.48 is actually a really, really short labour. Um, established labour, I was obviously not even an hour. So yeah, like I'm really, really lucky in terms of that. And then as soon as all of that was over, like the worst part was the part when I went to labor ward, m once my water broke, before I got the gas and air, that was the worst part. Afterwards, actually I was fine. So the later I got into labor, the easier it became because I had the gas and air, because I was obviously more dilated as well, I guess. He was born at 2.48 and then he was passed to me, um, obviously. <laughs> Like rubbed him, like stimulated him a bit, and he was on my chest doing um, skin to skin, and it was just insane. And I was just like, Ash, like how? Look, look, it's our baby. I can't believe it. After he was born, obviously we stayed in that room for a while. Ash cut the cord. I birthed the, the placenta, um, like had the injection to to make that quicker. I was really, really lucky that I wasn't too injured or anything like that. I didn't have um, a really bad tear. I had like an external tear, but nothing like dramatic. After I cut the cord, he went over like, and the midwife had gone off somewhere um, to like go and fill out my forms and write everything up and that. Ash went to wash his hands after. He'd helped been holding George and stuff. And um, he was like washing his hands and he was like, ugh, and I was like, what? What, what is it? And he was like, oh, your placenta's just chilling next to the sink. And I was like, oh, okay, gross. <laughs> I didn't even see it. Ash obviously saw it, but I'm, I'm like, no, nah, I don't really want to look at that. 
when they brought in my tea and toast, which is like the standard thing you get after you've given birth, I don't know what, in the UK hospitals it's like the standard thing they give you, the only thing that I didn't mention is I was sick again after that, which is a bit annoying, but uh, yeah, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it, I'm not sure, my body was in shock probably. Then about 5.30, um, I think we then, I went to the postnatal ward, Ash took, like brought all of our stuff, um, through, I was like just pushing, well I had a shower actually before that, I had a shower which was actually fine um, and I went to the toilet and stuff which stung a bit, basically pouring water over yourself when you go to the toilet for the first time. Lifesaver, I had, um, I can show you it in another video but I had this little bottle thing that like has a little spout on it <laughs> and you basically just squeeze it and it goes and it dilutes down there and it is a lot more pleasant than not doing that basically, had a shower, went to the toilet, yeah, freshened up, got changed, all that kind of stuff, um, and then when I went to the neonatal, not neonatal, when I went to the postnatal ward, Ash had to leave, obviously, because COVID, um, and I think visiting hours generally, to be honest, um, he had to leave, he came back the following day, um, that night was all right, I was knackered, obviously, as was George, um, oh yeah, by the way, when we, when we were in the other room before I went to the postnatal ward. We gave him some of the colostrum that I've harvested for him. So when I was uh, like th uh, 36 weeks pregnant or something along those lines, I started harvesting colostrum because I wasn't going to breastfeed, but I really wanted him to have the colostrum. So I harvested that in those syringes, like the golden stuff basically that comes before the breast milk comes. Um, gave him some of that. Apparently it's like... People call it like liquid gold and stuff like that, so it's supposed to be really, really good for them. I was giving him through the syringe, I gave him a few of those, and then gave him a bit the next morning. I was trying to push it out of the syringe though, <laughs> and um, like the following morning, and it was coming out, coming out, coming out, and then it got stuck, and then I pushed it a little bit too hard and it just squirted everywhere, and I was just like, oh my god. But after that we were using those pre-made um, formula bottles, just because they were easier for hospital. Um, rather than having to make up bottles, but now we're using the bottles, like normal formula, making formula up, and using those, and he's feeding really, really well, and yeah, no complaints at all. So yeah, that is pretty much my birth story. Um, I feel like I've probably skimmed over some stuff and forgotten some things, but if you've got any questions, let me know. I'll answer them down in the comments, or message me on Instagram, or whatever. But yeah, baby George is amazing. My birth story was amazing, the induction process was really easy, like the actual induction, like the, 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 like I said, the worst part for me was when I was having harsh contractions after my waters broke from midnight to about half past one before I got the um, gas and air, so if you're having an induction and you are having really, really harsh contractions, get the bloody gas and air, give the, tell them to give you gas and air because Inductions are known for being a bit more painful than natural going into labour like spontaneously, but that was the worst part for sure. So um, I mean, not everyone's not everyone's the same. It might not to be like the magic magic fixer for you, and your labour might be a lot longer. It might be a lot shorter. Like who knows? But that was my experience, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. I genuinely would. Pregnancy, on the other hand, not so keen on labour and birth, I'll do it again. So yeah, um, anyway, I'm gonna leave you now guys because George is probably gonna wake up any moment now. But thank you so much for watching this video. I will be back with some more videos, um, obviously baby related, home related, because I've moved house, there'll be lots of decorating and all that kind of good stuff. Let me know down in the comments what kind of videos you wanna see from me and I will see you in the next one guys, bye.